Yo, what's up, guys? In my last video, I brought you the best cards in Pool 1, in my opinion. And today, I'm going to uh, let you know what my favorite cards in Pool 2 are for you to use to climb through the ranks. Let's get into it right now. Iceman might not seem like it does too much, but increasing the cost of a card in your opponent's hand is actually a big deal. It can be a big deal, um, especially if they have a, a play lined up for the next turn or, or a specific turn. Uh then you, you're basically just making them play off curve or making them pass on a turn where they wanted to play a card. So uh, this can make your opponent's hand very awkward. Of course, you don't really know what you hit until later on in the game, but Iceman is a very solid one drop. And uh, this is the only one cost minion that I have from pool two that really stands out to me. Bucky Barnes is a very strong card. It may look weak on the surface as a two energy for one power minion, but uh, of course, Nova Carnage is a big thing and Carnage, uh, Deathlock, those are cards that you run in that kind of deck, of course. Uh, so you can easily kill off Bucky Barnes and spawn a six power minion uh, for only two mana there. Just playing Carnage uh, next to that Bucky Barnes, following the Bucky Barnes, you have a 10 power. Uh, you have 10 power for four energy, essentially. It's a very big deal. And uh, with Deathlock, it's still very strong as well. This is a very powerful two drop that you're going to see throughout your whole entire time in Marvel Snap. Next up is the Collector, another card that you're going to see a lot. Um, the Collector works very well with a lot of cards in the game, like Agent 13, Sentinel, just anything that adds a card to your hand, except for from your deck. Uh, this card is going to get buffed up, and it's kind of like Bishop in the sense that it just keeps growing, and it kind of decentivizes your opponent to play in that lane because this card can get very strong and it's also hard to know uh, exactly how strong this card is going to get at any given time this card does really stand out with moon girl as well um every single card that you duplicate in your hand uh it gets plus one for each of those scorpion is one of the best two drops in the game this is just a very impactful card um it's just a lot you get a lot of value for two energy Next up is Killmonger. On my pool one list, I did have Electra on there and she destroys a one drop, but uh, Killmonger destroys all one cost cards. So very powerful card, especially since a lot of people uh, play uh, a kazoo kind of deck where they run Kazar and they run a lot of one cost uh, cards in their deck in pool one and pool two. So uh, I believe this card is one of the best tech cards in the game. Next up is Shang-Chi. This is one of my favorite cards in the game. Uh, Shang-Chi destroys all enemy cards that are nine or more power, so it can do multiple at a time. And uh, yeah, this is really good with not only uh, a lot of people play big cards. I mean, especially if you're pool one, pool two, you're going to be playing Chavez. A lot of the, you're going to be playing into Chavez, Devil Dinosaur, uh, maybe some Infinite, the Hulk. Um, and then there's locations that spawn uh, big things like Hulks and also like nine power monsters. So Shang-Chi is very strong. Uh, one of my favorite tech cards in the game. And uh, you should run it. Yeah. But you should probably only play it in a more slow control like deck. The last card that I have here is Vision. You might not see it too often, but uh, the ability to move things is very, very strong in the game because uh, it's very unpredictable, especially on the last turn of the game because there, it just adds another, uh, it adds like another set of variables into your uh, calculations of, of how the last turn is gonna play out. So a card like Vision where you can move it every turn, uh, you can really throw off your opponent and uh, make it so maybe you protect yourself against a Hobgoblin in, in a sense, and then you can just move Vision, or you uh, put it in a location, you're fighting for a location, you force your opponent to fight there and then you move him out of there. It's uh, There's a lot of things you can do with Vision, a lot of mind games you can pull off. I think this card is very powerful and uh, probably underrated. A couple honorable mentions here, Hobgoblin. Uh, this is one of my favorite cards personally, uh, but it can be pretty weak if your opponent just eats it with Carnage or uh, destroys it with Deathlock. So yes, this card can do very powerful things. It might be a little risky sometimes. If you do fill up your, if you do manage to fill up your opponent's uh, location with this card, it's super, super strong, but uh, can be risky. It can totally screw you over, uh, but it's just a very fun card to play. I like it. And if your opponent does play a scorpion and they reduce the uh, the things in your hand, if they lower the power, then it actually does help out Hobgoblin. And there's a couple of uh, locations that actually work very well with him as well, like the negative zone. The last honorable mention is the Infinite. Uh, this card is a lot of energy for power, of course, but uh, you do have to skip a turn to, to play the Infinite. So if, if your opponent sees that you skip a turn, then it's very obvious that you're gonna play infinite and he can only contest one lane so that's why i don't think he's that strong uh, of course if you get him randomly off like jubilee uh or later on in the game hella then he's a lot more strong but uh the fact that it kind of telegraphs what your play is going to be on the last turn 
makes it a lot weaker and that's why it's only an honorable mention and that's my list of pool two cards that i think are the best uh i hope you liked the video and i'll be making a pool three video very soon if you like the video please give it a like please subscribe and uh, let me know down below what you think of my list and what maybe i missed keep it snappy